start. A very good afternoon to all of you. I, Dr. Tanya Bose, welcome you to the second session of Life FDP on LaTeX, an art of writing research manuscript. So yesterday I discussed the basic document creation in LaTeX, how to create the title page and to organize your research manuscript into different sections and subsections. We also learned to generate the table of contents. So let me conduct a short quiz just to check your knowledge of the previous session. And here goes the first question. Quickly mark your answer. So let me close the first question. So 74% of you have marked the option as the first one and it is the correct one. Okay, so now let's throw the second question. And the second question is, mark your answer. Okay, so let me close this question now. And 53% of you are marking the answer as the third one, backslash make title. And this is the correct one. And here goes the third question. Mark your options. Okay, so now let me close this question. So the correct answer is the last option that is backslash table of contents. There is no option as, there is no command in LaTeX as backslash index. So 40% of you are marking it as the first option, it is wrong. So it is the last option, backslash table of contents. And here is the last question for today's quiz. Okay, so let me close the question. And 73% of you are marking the answer as the first option, and it is the correct one. So a big round of applause for those who have done all correct, given all the answers correctly. Okay, so yesterday I got many queries regarding the recording links of my session. Yesterday, whosoever has joined my session, I have already mailed them my recording link. In case uh, you didn't receive the recording link, you can just drop me a mail. I will send you the recording link of yesterday's session, right? Otherwise, on daily basis, I will be sending you my links by the end of the session. Okay, so let me begin my today's session. So today, the presentation, the outline of my presentation would be text formatting. We already started with text formatting yesterday, so we'll continue with this. Then I will tell you the source code behind how to insert graphics and how to make the tables. So let's begin with the first section that is text formatting. Okay. So in text formatting, the first is length. Length consists of a decimal number with a positive or a negative sign. That means length can be both positive as well as negative. 
So what are the permissible units? The permissible units are centimeter, millimeter. So you have to write cm for centimeter, mm for millimeter. Then for inch, we have in. Point is pt. Then we have another command of permissible unit of length as em. Em means it is the width of the capital M letter, right? So this width, this is your em font. Then we have ex. It is the height of the letter x. So when you write the letter x, the height of this letter is denoted by the permissible unit ex. So most commonly, we use centimeter, we use millimeter, and we use inch, right? So I'll let you know about the applications in the later slides. Okay. Then we have spacing between words. Now later controls the spacing of your document. Now just let me give you a comparison of this point with MS Word. Now suppose you are going to write a document in MS Word, and between suppose two words, you put a blank, right? So when you check your output, you will see that same blank is there in Word. And if you put two blank spaces between two words, naturally you will see two spaces blank between the two words and likewise. But in LaTeX what happens while typing, suppose if you forget to give the same spacing between the words, when you check your output, you will get the spacing between two words as one size only, right? That means one blank space is same as million blank spaces. So even if you put million blank spaces between two words, and when you check the output, you will get only one blank space, right? So this is a common mistake in Word. You get a, a blue line mark between the two words if the spacing is more than one, right? But in LaTeX, it is controlled. Even if you forget to give same spacing between the words, even if you put many spaces, when you check the output, you will get one blank space only, right? Then tabs are treated like blank spaces. Blanks at the end of a line are ignored. So even if you forget to put a blank space after the end of a line, no need to worry. The next line will start, will continue from that same previous line. A single enter is treated like a blank space. So if you put one enter, if you press one enter, it will be considered as one blank space. Even if you press more than one enter, it will mark the beginning of a new paragraph. So it won't sh show those many enter spaces in your output. It will only convert the next line into a new paragraph if you press more than one enter. Okay, so let me show you the screenshot. So yesterday we were talking about this document that we were preparing yesterday. Those, so the title page we already created. Now you can see that I have written latex is an and I have put many blank spaces here. And then I'm writing the next word as extremely, right? So I have created many blank spaces between the two words and and extremely. When I compile this document, what happens? You can check that between and and extremely, there is only one blank space, right? That means this is an advantage of using LaTeX. Because even if you forget to put equal spaces between the words, when you check the output, it will be balanced, right? Okay. Now look at the second thing that I want to show here. After the first paragraph ends, I have pressed multiple enters. So you can see that I have pressed two enters. So what is happening? LaTeX will start this as a new paragraph, right? So let me show you this with the help of the LaTeX editor. Let me share my screen with you first so you'll get an idea what am i talking all about okay so the same article i'm writing here let me show you live so you can see that i am putting multiple spaces here right now when i compile and build the view can you see that there is no space here right so you can check that there is no, there is only one blank space between and and extremely, right? That means one blank space is equivalent to million spaces, right? The second thing that I want to make you clear that if I press, suppose after this document, I am pressing one enter, right? Now when I execute this, when I compile it, there is no change. That means one enter will be treated as one blank space only. But if I press more than one enter what will happen 
it will convert this line or this whole thing after it into a next paragraph right so can you see that if you press multiple enters it will only consider it as a new paragraph it won't show the same thing on here but if the same thing you were working in microsoft word whatsoever spaces you have left here all those spaces would be shown as it is and the number of enters you have pressed here same you will be shown in the output also right okay so let me go back to my presentation okay so i hope this point is clear spacing between the words now let me talk about double spacing now sometimes you see that in your article all the lines should be doubly spaced throughout your research article right some these are some mandatory requirements or maybe sometimes in reports also you need that the entire draft should be doubly spaced then what command is to be used we have to use the command renew backslash renew command then in braces we will write backslash baseline stretch and if i want double spacing between the lines i have to write the number 2 if i want that the spacing between the lines should be 3 i will write here 3 and likewise whatever number i want here i can write 1 i can write anything here right and it has to be written in the preamble part so i explained what is the preamble yesterday preamble is the part it is a region between the first line that is backslash document class article and begin document so you have to write this command in the preamble because whatever we write in the preamble that is applicable for the whole document so let me show you the screenshot so you can see that same article i'm using and i have in the preamble i have written the same command backslash renew command baseline stretch and i'm writing the number 2 so can you see earlier it was singly spaced now the article has been doubly spaced right so this is the way how we put double spacing between the lines right okay now how to break a line now we have seen that by pressing more than one enter the next line shifts to the next paragraph right that is one way otherwise if you want to change the next line to a new line what is to be used we use double backslash symbol right and you can see that i have written a square bracket here square bracket means option this you can give you might not give right so in this you have to give the space so we did the length dimensions so if i write suppose 1.5 cm here so what happens from the first line and the second line the gap between the two lines would be 1.5 cm likewise i can put any number here and if i avoid it automatically the next line will start from the next one right so this is one way of giving these uh, making a new line so you can use double line double backslash the second way is you can also give the command backslash new line so this or this it is identical to each other you can use either backslash new line or you can use double backslashes right okay now let us take this example you can see that after the first paragraph ends i have written two backslash and then i am starting the next paragraph so when i compile it i can see that the first paragraph is from latex to package and then afterwards this paragraph has been shifted to the next line right so let me show you there in the latex editor also okay so let's come back to this article let me combine it into one simple paragraph everything okay now suppose i want that this line should start from a new line right so what will i do after the end of the first line i will put double backslash simple right either i can use this now suppose even i want that after this other document also i want the next line should start from the new line so let me use the command new line you will see that both the things are the same let me execute it can you see the first line is till from latex to documents then you can see that the second line is starting from it is standard till 
other document. So you can see that this is converted into a new line. And then I have written new line, those whose publication. So this has been converted to the next line, right? Likewise, I was telling you about the spacing command. Now suppose I want that the spacing between the first and the second line, it should be say two centimeters. Let me give this unit. Now let me execute it. So can you see that there is a spacing of two centimeters between the first and the second line, right? Likewise, I can give any length unit here. I can use 1.5 inch. Now, when I execute it, I can see that between the first and the second line, the spacing is 1.5 inch, right? Likewise, I can use millimeter. So you can see that the spacing is 1.5 mm, right? So this is how we put spacing between the documents, right? Okay, so let me go back to the slides now. Okay. So we saw how to break a line with LaTeX. Now this page breaking. Now suppose you want that some part of your text would go to the next page, right? So how to use that option? So we use the command backslash new page for page breaking, right? So, okay. So you can see, look at the screenshot. The first paragraph ends here. Then I want that the second paragraph should go to the next page. So I'm using the command new page, backslash new page. If you simply write new page, it will give you an error. I told you yesterday that every command in LaTeX starts with the backslash symbol. So you have to give backslash new page. Check the output. The first paragraph is on the first page. The second paragraph has been shifted to the second page, right? So this is how we break a page with LaTeX. Now, horizontal spacing. So we have seen that if I put two backslashes and I give the length unit in square brackets, I can make vertical spacing between the lines. Now, how to make horizontal spacing between the words, right? So we have also seen that in LaTeX, one, million, one space is same as million spaces. So if I want to shift Suppose the, between the first word and the second one, I want a particular spacing. How will I do it? With the help of spaced bars, I cannot shift the second one, right? So how to make it? So we use the command backslash x space. And then in curly braces, again, since I've written curly braces, it is mandatory. I have to give how much space I want. So I told you about the length dimension. So using those length dimensions, we have to mention the space here. And then using this command, the two words will get a horizontal spacing, whatever you mentioned, right? Let us look at this example. This is backslash x space. And then I've mentioned how much space I want. I need one centimeter spacing between the two words is and one centimeter. So when I check the output, I can see that between is and one centimeter, there is a spacing of one centimeter, right? So to put horizontal spacing, the command used is backslash x space. Likewise, we also have a command for vertical spacing. So for vertical spacing, you can write backslash v spacing. The earlier command will also work. That is double uh, using two backslashes and then putting in square brackets the space. Likewise, you can also use backslash v space and you can put the space dimensions here. Now here, when you're putting the space dimensions, the space dimensions can be positive as well as negative. If you put a positive spacing, the this suppose you put a spacing of one centimeter here, then this part will shift to downwards to one centimeter. But if I put negative spacing here, minus one centimeter, this part of the document will be shifted in the upward direction, right? So if I put positive spacing, it will move in the downward direction. If I give negative spacing, it will go in the upward direction. Clear? Okay. Then is footnotes. You might have seen that while you're preparing a research manuscript in the title, suppose with the author, we have a star mark and that star mark is explained at the bottom of that very page as corresponding author, right? So what is it? It is a footnote that it is letting me know that this author is the corresponding author of this manuscript. 
So how do we insert footnotes in LaTeX? So the command used is backslash footnote and whatever text you want to write with that uh, with that number or with that letter, you will put your message here, right? Suppose I want to mark it as a corresponding author. So my message will be displayed here that in braces, I will write corresponding author, right? Let us look at this example. I have written footnotes, foot backslash footnote. This is a footnote are generated with the command. So can you see that this is a footnote? Footnotes, I have given the command here. So this one means this is a footnote. So with backslash footnote command, this is a footnote is displayed at the bottom of the page. Okay, let me show you this here in the LaTeX editor screen. Let me share my screen first. Okay, let's come back here. Okay, now let me suppose that I write my author. Okay, let me write the author first. Yeah. Author. And then I am to display my contents of the title. I have to give the command make title, if you remember it. And now when I check my output, okay, so I have to give date. Okay, I have to, so it is telling me an error because I haven't mentioned the title. So it will not display the title otherwise. So let me write LaTeX and now let me execute this command, right? So you can see that the title is displayed, the author is displayed. Now suppose I want to give that the author is a corresponding author here. So what should I do? So I will use the command backslash footnote and in curly braces, let me write down corresponding author. Okay, done. Now, when I press enter or when I just click this, you can see that with my name, there is a star marked here and this star will be explained at the bottom of the page. Can you see at the bottom of the page, it is written, what is the meaning of this footnote? You can see it is written as corresponding author. So wherever you place the footnotes, automatically they will be given different symbols and they will be mentioned here at the bottom of that very page, right? So I guess this is clear to everybody. Okay, now let me go back to the screen. Okay. Now, next, so I've told you how to use the footnote command I've shown you. So here I've written that after documents, I've written footnote and, and I want to display the message webinar on LaTeX and Art of Writing Research Manuscript. And when I compile it, I can see that after documents, there is a marked as one as a footnote and that one has been explained at the bottom of that page, right? Okay, so now, we have different choice of font size also. So the different declarations are backslash tiny, backslash script size, backslash footnote size, backslash small, backslash normal size, backslash large, backslash large, large again. So you can see that three different large are written here. One, this one is in all smalls. There here, the first one is in capital. Here, all the letters are in capitals. Likewise, we have huge and huge. Here, capital H and small h. So you can try these different examples. I'll show you these screenshots here. Now you can see that these are three different texts written with three different font sizes. This is a normal size as we write in LaTeX. This is a bit smaller size and this is a bit larger size, right? Now how to produce it? What is the source file? Whichever text you want to write in a different font size, you have to enclose that text in a curly brace and you have to give the command. Suppose I want that smallest should be written in tiny font size. 
So I have enclosed the letter smallest in a curly brace and in front of it, I'm writing backslash tiny. Then normal is written as it is. There is no change to normal. Then I want that the largest should be written with the font size huge. So I have enclosed huge in curly braces and in front of largest, I'm writing backslash huge, right? So when I check this output, I will get this as my output. So this is the source code behind it, right? So you can try all these sizes later on when you are practicing, right? So you will get to see what are the different font sizes available in later. Okay. Similarly, we also we can also change the appearance of words. These features are also available in Word also. So you can make a text bold, you can make a text italic, you can make, underline some words, you can emphasize some words. So what are the source code behind all these things? So look at this output. You can see that I've written this text, but in this text, two words have been, are in bold face, right? So in Word, you just click, you just select that word and you mark the option bold, B is written in the uh, top, and you mark that option and automatically that particular word will get bold. Here, what to do? We will first of all enclose that particular word in a curly braces and before the curly brace, I have to give the command text bf, right? There is a change how we are writing these commands. In font sizes, we were writing the command within the curly braces. This point is to be noted. But when I'm changing the appearance, I'm not writing within the curly braces, I'm writing it outside the curly braces, right? So signs, and in front of it, I'm writing backslash text bf. So it is bold face. Similarly, before accident, I'm writing backslash text bf. So when I check the when I compile this data, I will get signs and accident in the bold face. Similarly, if you want to change it into an italic face, you can see that the same letters have been in italic. You have to use the command backslash text it. So it is for italic, right? Okay. Similarly, you can underline. For underline, you have to use the command backslash underline. So you can see that it's not very difficult to remember the commands. They are very user friendly. Whatsoever you want to make it, the commands are also in that way, right? So it is backslash underlined. So you will get that signs and accident will be underlined. Similarly, emphasis is the same as italic. So either you can use the command text IT or you can use the command EMPH for emphasize. So the result is same. The particular words will be emphasized or they will be made in the italic. Yeah, okay. Now, sometimes what happens that some particular part of a text has to be written in the center. There is a center alignment for it, right? Otherwise, the entire text is justified, but suppose some part of the text you want in the center. So what is the command used? So you have to use an environment for that. So suppose I want that don't stop until you succeed. This particular line should be written within, uh, in, a, in the center, right? So before the line starts, I have to give the environment backslash begin center. And when I want to end it, I have to end the environment with end center. So whenever you begin something, you have to end it also. If you forget any one of these statements, you will get automatically an error. It will tell you that the begin statement has no end, right? So it will not generate the output. So when I check its output, you can see that these three lines, and I've also put double backslashes after like stop after you so automatically this will start from a new line right so you can see that don't stop until you succeed is marked at the center so this is one way of writing center secondly you can also use the command backslash centering so when you use backslash centering whatever text you write after this command the entire thing will be shifted to the center similarly Suppose you just want a particular line, a single line to be marked in the center. So what will you write? You will write the command backslash center line. And whatever line you want to write in the center, you have to mention, you have to enclose that line within curly braces. So only that particular line will be marked at the center. Rest will be marked as this, 
right? Okay. Let me show you in the LaTeX editor part. Now let me change these things. Now suppose let me write something here. Let me write LaTeX FDP. And I want to write it in the center. So see what happens when I use the command centering. Let me execute it. And when I execute it, can you see that after the first paragraph ends, the two words LaTeX FTP has been shifted to the center, right? Or I can also give the command. I can use the environment as begin center. And I can, after the text, I have to end this environment and let me again execute it. I see the same thing. Latex FDP has been shifted to the center, right? Now, suppose I want to uh, mark a line. Suppose let me take this line and I want to mark this at the center. So what will I do? I have to use the command center line and I will put a curly braces that I want that this particular line should be marked towards the center. So let me execute it. So let me just a minute. Okay, I have to convert this into a new line only then it will execute. Okay, so can you see that after LaTeX, I have put two backslashes, so it will move it to the next line and the next line is marked at the center of the text, right? So I hope it is clear how to use these commands in the LaTeX editor. Okay, so now let's go back to the presentation. So now next is how to insert special characters. Now you cannot use these special characters as such in LaTeX. If you put these special characters in LaTeX, it will not execute them and it will always result into an error, right? But then the question is, if I want to write, suppose I want to write some currency in dollar, how will I write it? Always, whenever you are using these special characters, we have to use the command backslash in front of them. So if I want to write the hash symbol, I have to write it as backslash hash. If I want to use the dollar symbol, I have to write backslash dollar. Likewise, yesterday we did percentage command that whenever you put a percentage command in front of any command, it will comment that statement. It will not execute that particular statement. But suppose if I want to write the percentage of a student, I have to write 70%. So how will I write 70%? I have to write 70 and then backslash percentage. And likewise, all these special characters have to be written in this. Right? Let me show you this. Look at this document, the same document. And you can see that in communication and publication, I have used a special character and, right? Simply and. And when I execute it, you can see it is giving me an error. The process is not exited normally. It is telling me misplaced alignment tab character and. So how will I execute this command? I have to write backslash and. And now when I execute it, I will get the same command written over here. I will see the character written over here, right? So I hope it is clear. Okay, so whenever you're using special characters using latex, you always keep in mind that you have to put a backslash in front of, right? Okay, now let's come to a quick question. Just to check how many of you are awake. Hmm. Okay, so the first question is, okay, so let me close it. 
Yes, the correct answer is LaTeX. Still, I can see that 5% are marking it as Microsoft Word. Either you have not listened to me carefully, I think. And the next question is then, Okay, so let me close. Yes, the correct answer is backslash and 94% of you have answered it correctly. Okay, so front slash has no role in LaTeX. Whenever you're writing a command or you need special characters, you have to use backslash. So with this, we have come to the end of the first section. Now let's move on to the second section that is graphics. Now, what is graphics? Graphic means to insert images in your document. So far, we have seen how to generate the title page, how to generate the table of contents, and how to make modifications within your document by organizing it into sections or by changing the appearance of your words. Now, suppose if I want to insert some pictures in your uh, document, how to do it? So here, pictures are inserted with the help of packages. As such, you cannot insert pictures in LaTeX. So you have to use the package. Please note this, use package graphic. It is not S, it is X at the end. So it is backslash use package graphic. Unless and until you mention this in the preamble and always whenever you are using packages in LaTeX, you always have to mention the packages in the preamble. So in the beginning only you have to mention it after the document class command, right? Without this package, your pictures will not be inserted in the document. It will always show you error. Okay. Now, what all can you do with the help of graphics package? So all the files with the format .png, .pdf, .jpg, they can be included in your documents with the help of this package. And then how do you insert those graphics? We use the command backslash include graphics. This is your optional command. I'll talk about to you in the later slides. The mandatory thing, you have to mention the name of the file, which file you want to insert, right? So the command is backslash include graphics, and you have to mention the name of the file in braces, right? And uh, we'll talk about this optional command later on. For just now, just remember that the key names are width, height, angle, and scale. Width means what should be the width of your image, Height means what should be the height of your image. Angle means what should be the inclination of your image. And scale means it is uh, mostly scale option is used because in this both width and height are adjusted accordingly. When you're only using the width option, only the width of the image is changed width, right? And when you're using the height command, only the height is changed. So there is an abnormal shift in your picture. But if you use the scale command, both weight and height are adjusted accordingly. Right? Okay, let me tell you about this command. Look at the screenshot. This was the same document. And I have taken a picture named as nature. And I'm inserting this graphic as include graphics. I have given the option scale equal to 0 0.5 in square brackets. And then I'm writing the name of the picture that I want to insert here as nature, right? So what is happening? When I have uh, compiled it, it is giving me an error. What is the error shown? Line 12, it is marking that particular line and you can see that the line is marked in a red highlight, right? And it is telling me undefined control sequence include graphics. Now, why is this error occurring? I just told you that include graphics will only work when I have inserted that particular package with it. So you can see in the preamble, the package is missing, right? So what I have to do, I have to insert the package use graphic X. You can see graphic is written as G-R-A-P-H-I-C-X, right? It is not S. So you have to give this in the preamble. And now when I give the same graphic command here, I can see that the picture is pasted here, right? And then what is the meaning of the scale option? Scale option means 
that the dimensions of the picture have been scaled as 0.5. You can use different numbers here. You can use 1, you can use 2.5, 3, 4. And accordingly, the it will be either magnified properly, right? According to your choice. Okay. So this is what is happening when I use the include graphics. So when I use the command include graphics, scale is 0 0.6. And when I write the uh, file name here, so it will display the picture of this nature, right? Okay. Now look at this output. You can see that there is some text written. What are the changes in the last slide and this slide? You, I'm writing a text here. Nature at its best is shown in figure one. This one I have not written on my own. This has been referred by LaTeX itself, right? And you can see that the picture of nature is displayed. And below the picture, the caption is also available, right? In the last slide, the caption was missing, right? So if I want to write the caption and I want to refer to that figure in my text, now as many times it happens while you're writing a research document, you have to mention at particular point in your text, the figure is applicable where, right? It's not that you are just mentioning the figures just for the sake of giving figures. You have to mention it also. Where are these figures used within the text, right? So to refer to that figure and to give the caption, how to make the source code. So please listen to it carefully. So the text is written as the theme of the workshop has been shown in. This is the text I've written. Then whenever you want a caption, you have to give it an environment. What is the environment used for giving in figures? You have to write backslash begin figure. And whenever any environment begins, you also have to end that. Sorry. You also have to end that um, environment. So I have written begin figure and then I have written backslash end figure. Right. OK. Then I want that my figure should be aligned to the center of my document. So I told you that to give center alignment, I will use the environment begin center, and then I'm also ending it, end center, right? Then I'm using the command backslash include graphics. I'm writing the file name as nature, and then I want the scale of the figure should be 0 0.4. Okay, now how to give the caption command? For caption, I am giving the command backslash caption, in curly braces, I have to write nature, the name that I want to display in the caption, right? Now, what is label and refer doing? Now, what am I doing? I want to refer to this figure in my text as figure one. Suppose I am giving this name. Suppose this is my first figure in my document. So just for the sake of simplicity, I'm naming it as one, right? You can write any name here. You can write A, B, C, X, Y, Z, any particular name. You can write it, anything you can write. Whatever name you give here, the same name has to be written here also, right? So what will label and refer do? When you label this as one, and when you refer here as one, whenever you refer here it as one, it will say that what is one in your figure? What is figure one? It will go to this, it will call it, and it will mention the number one here, right? Let me show you. Okay, let me show you it in the LaTeX editor itself. Let me go to that LaTeX editor. Okay, let's come to the figure tab. Okay. I have already written this command, begin figure, end figure. And I have included graphics, scale one, nature, right? Now it is always advisable in whichever folder you have saved your file, in that same folder you have to put this figure. If your figure is placed in some other folder and you are working in some other file, it will not be executed, right? It will show you that that is an error. So in whichever folder you are working in that source code, in that same very folder, you have to put the figure also, right? Now let me execute it. 
So you can see that the figure is displayed here, right? There is no caption. I've given scale one, so you can see that the size of the figure is this way. If I give scale as 0 0.5, you can see that the size of the figure is reduced, right? So whenever you are giving the scale option, you will not mention any length units here, no centimeter, no millimeter, only the numeric part is to be written here, right? Now, let me give the caption as, okay, let me give nature only. Let me give the caption nature. Can you see that the figure is uh, after below the figure, the caption is written as figure one is equal to nature. Can you see that I didn't write figure one? It is automatically marked from later, right? Okay. The second thing that I want to tell you, you can see that the figure is not aligned to the center. So to make the figure also shift to the center, before the include graphic statement, I have to give the command begin center. And after the include graphics command, I have to end that environment, end center, right? Now let me execute it. So you can, I think you can see that the figure has been aligned towards the center, right? Now the next thing that I want to tell you is about label and resop. Now suppose I label this for my sake, I'm labeling this figure as Okay, let me label it as ABC. I have not given one, I've written ABC, right? Now, and I want to refer to this figure at this point, right? I want to write it as refer. I have to give the same name here. If I write one, then it will not be executed, right? I've given ABC. Now see, okay, before that, let me show you. After documents, nothing is written here, right? Now check what happens when I execute it. Can you see that documents one is written here? So if I write as in figure, so it is showing me as in figure one, right? See, I have not mentioned one from my end. In this document, this was the first figure. So it is automatically numbered as one, right? Now let me insert a second picture. The same picture, let me insert at the second place. Okay. Now, let me label it with a different name. Let me name it as X, Y, Z, right? And let me name, refer to this here after this line as in figure refer X, Y, Z. Let me execute it. Okay, can you see that in the document, here figure one comes, that is the figure that I've named as ABC, and here at this place, figure two is appearing, the figure that I've been referring as XYZ. And in my document, I have my first figure as nature, and I have my second figure as also nature, right? So you can see that, this numbering is automatically done in LaTeX. So it helps you whenever you change their positions also. Suppose, uh, since I'm using the same figure, even if I use different figure, it will be more clear to you that even if I change their positions, these numbers will automatically get changed, right? Suppose I change this to X, Y, Z here. And I change this as a, B, C. So you can see that automatically the numbering will change in LaTeX. You don't have to do anything for this. Let me execute it and you can see. Earlier it was marked as figure one and figure two. Now see what happens. See, this is figure two now and this is figure one now, right? So at any point of time, even after finishing your whole document, you can make changes and automatically they will be renumbered on their own. You don't have to make any changes there, right? So for calling purpose, label it with any name, the same thing you have to write in refer, right? 
So this is about figure. So let me go back to the presentation now. Okay. Okay. So now we move on to the last section that is tables. Now for table, what things you have to keep in mind? Now in tables, again, the environment you have to use is begin tabula. And when the table ends, you have to write it as end tabula, right? And with begin tabula command, you have to give the justification. What is justification now? Now, whenever you are making a table, the text that you are writing, that has to be justified. There are three justifications available. Either it is left justified or it is centered or it is right justified. So if you are writing less, uh, if you want the text to be left justified, you have to use the command L. If you want center justification, you have to use the command C. If you are using right justification, you have to use the command R, right? This is about the justification part. Then for the body of the table, what is to be done? For separate column entries, you have to use the symbol AND. So after the first cell entry finishes, you have to distinguish between the first cell and the second cell with the help of AND symbol, right? Then we have to put vertical lines in between the tables also, right? So the vertical lines are put with the help of this command. You can see that in the backslash command in your keyboard, with the shift command, you can use this vertical line, right? This is available in the backslash command in your keyboard. And then for horizontal lines in your table, you have to use the command H line, right? C line, I'll tell you later on in my slides. So for now, the environment is begin tabular, end tabular. When you begin tabular, you have to put the justification that the text in your table should be aligned in which direction, L, C, or R. Then to separate the column entries, you have to use the symbol and. For vertical lines, you have to use this command. And for horizontal lines, you have to give the command backslash H, right? Okay. Let us take this example. I have one, two, three, four columns, and I have three rows, right? And I can see that my table, now in LaTeX, you have to make the lines also on your own. Nobody is going to design it for you, right? So all the horizontal lines you can see here and all the vertical lines that you can see here, you have to design it on your own. How will I design? First of all, you can see that there is a horizontal line at the first place. Then in between these columns, how many vertical lines are there? One, two, three, four, and five vertical lines are present, right? Okay, and then I'll tell you how to write these text. Okay, let's go to the source code. So I have started with the environment backslash begin tabular, right? Now, if you remember, I have to write the justification. Okay, how will I write the justification? See, you can see that all the text is center aligned, right? So for center alignment, we have C command, right? And for vertical lines, I have this. So I can see that there is a vertical line, then the text is center aligned, then there is another vertical line, then the text is center aligned, then there is another vertical line, center line text, vertical line, center line text, and vertical line. So this thing I have to write in justification. So I can see that there is a vertical line, then I've written C, then a vertical line, then again C, then a vertical line, then again C, a vertical line, again C, and then vertical line, right? So all this justification I have to mention here. Okay, let's go back to the table. Now we have told LaTeX about the vertical lines. Now let's begin with the horizontal lines and with the text. So there is a, before we start with writing the text in the table, what can you see? There is a horizontal line to begin with. So for horizontal line, what is the command? Backslash H line. So I am writing in the next line, backslash H line. Okay. 
So backslash H line will create my first horizontal line. Then what are the texts written in the first row? Webinar, C++, MATLAB, and LaTeX. So there are four entries. So how am I writing it? I'm writing webinar. Then I told you to separate the column entries. You have to put AND, right? So you can see I've written webinar, then AND, then C++, then AND, then MATLAB, then AND, and then LaTeX, right? Then I want that the entry should move on to the next row. So I have used the command double backslash, right? Let's go back to the table again. After the first row completes, you can see there is the second horizontal line, right? So after the first line, I'm writing backslash H line, right? After backslash H line, you can see that the second row starts. So the second row entries are start date and these three dates are given. So how will I write it? Start date, then I'm writing and, then I'm mentioning all the three dates with the help of and, right? And when the second row ends, I'm writing double backslash. And when the second row ends, there is a third horizontal line. Then we have the third row entries and then we have a fourth line, horizontal line. Likewise, you can see that I have written H line. I have written the entries of my third row and then I have marked H line. And then I have written end tab, right? So this is the source code when we have to construct a table, right? Let me show you the screenshot. This, okay, I'll show you it in the LaTeX editor itself. Let me share that screen with you. Let me go to the table one. Okay, let me execute it. Okay. So I hope it is visible to everybody. Let me zoom in the output. Okay. Look at this. Let me just explain it once again. It's, uh, to start with, it is a little difficult. So you can see begin tabular, then this justification is very important. If you write wrong justification here, the table will not be executed. It will lead to an error, right? So the first the vertical line, this first vertical line is written here. It is marked as like this. Then the text is center aligned. So I'm writing C. Then there is the second vertical line. So that vertical line is mentioned here. Then the next text is written again in center alignment. So I'm writing C here. Then there is the third vertical line. So it is written here. Then the fourth text is written in center alignment. So it is written C here. You can write L and R also. That is according to you, how you want the text to appear. And then we have the next text written in center alignment. And then the final vertical line is written here, right? Then. To start with, we have first the horizontal line. So we have H line. Then we have the text of the first row. The first row entries have been distinguished with the help of AND symbol. Then when the first row ends, you have to put double backslash. Then there is a second horizontal line. So we are writing it as backslash H line. Then the second row entries are there. Then we have a third horizontal line. Then the fourth row entries are there. Then we have the next horizontal line and when you execute this command the file you will get this as your output right okay let us go back to the presentation and see some other tables also so it will become more clear to you how to make these tables look at this table it is different from the last table that we did there are no horizontal lines here and you can see that there are three vertical lines and you can see that the text has been aligned as L. It is left aligned, right? How to write the source code? So we have written begin tabular, end tabular. Justification is to be mentioned here. So the vertical lines, there are three vertical lines and in between text, they are left aligned. So the first vertical line is written here. Then I'm writing the text for left. It is left aligned. Then the second vertical line is written here. Then the second column entries are left aligned. So I'm writing L for that. And then finally, the last vertical line is written here, right? So you can see that to begin with, there is no horizontal lines present here. So there is no command H line. 
Then the first row entries are apples, green. So I'm differentiating it with and symbol. Then I want it to shift it to the next row. So I'm writing double backslash. Then I'm writing strawberries and red, double backslash, oranges and orange. So when I execute the source code, I will get my output in this way, right? Likewise, this is again a little change. Now you can see that the vertical lines are absent. There is a complete horizontal line here. This horizontal line is only partial and there is no horizontal line at the end. So how to write the source code for it? And uh, the alignment you can see is that the first column entries are right aligned and the second column entries are center aligned. So I've written begin tabular end tabular. Since no vertical lines are present, so I'm not writing any vertical symbols here, right? I'm writing that the first column is right aligned, the second column is center aligned, right? To begin with, there is no horizontal line at the top. Directly the entries I'm writing, apples and green. Then I'm writing double backslash. Then there is a horizontal complete line. So I'm writing it as H line. Then I'm writing the second row entries as strawberries and red. Then again, backslash. Then you can see that there is a partial line from the first column to the first column, right? Now, if you remember, I left this part in my first slide. To make a partial horizontal line between any two columns, you have to use the command backslash C line and whichever columns you want to mention, you can mention there. So if I want to mention that the line should be between column numbers one and column number two, I will give the command one slash two, right? So now let's go back to that slide. So you can see that only first column to first column, there is a partial line. So I'm using the command backslash C line and in curly braces, I'm writing one dash one. So it will, only be, it will only mark the horizontal line from first column to first column, right? Then the third row entries are written oranges and orange. Then, then there is no horizontal line. So I'm putting a double backslash. So when I execute the source code, I will get my table in this way, right? And this is the last part. You can see here, Again, this is a bit difficult table. There are vertical lines, there are horizontal lines, then there are partial lines also in between. So let's quickly see there are two columns. You can see that the first column is right aligned. The second column is left aligned, right? And there are vertical lines in between. So I'm writing begin tabular and end tabular environment. I've write, written the first vertical line. Then I'm writing that the text is right aligned. Then I'm writing the second vertical line. Then I'm writing that the text is left aligned. And then I'm writing it as the third vertical line, right? Now to begin with, there is a horizontal line in the beginning. So I'm writing H line. Then the entries are eight and here's. Then I'm writing double backslash. Now in, after eight and here's, you can see there is a partial line between the second column to the second column. So I'm writing C line two dash two. Then I'm writing the entries of the second row that is 86 and stuff. Then I'm putting two backslash command. Then you can see there are two horizontal lines, one and two. So I'm writing H line, H line. Then I'm writing the entries of the third row, 2008 and now. Then I'm writing two backslash. And then there is again another horizontal line. So I'm writing it as H line, right? So when I execute this, I get my table in this format. So you can, there is a flexibility, whichever way you want the vertical and horizontal lines to be, accordingly you can make the justifications and accordingly you can write the source code, right? Okay. So this is an example for you. This is just a practice exercise. So once you uh, practice all the previous slides, you can just check in to make this table and I've already provided you with the source code in the next slide. So try to avoid checking it first. Try to make it on your own and then you can check your answer. The result is written already here. So with this, I end my session. You can always reach out with your problems to me at my email address. So till then, take care, stay safe and stay ho at home. So we meet tomorrow again at the same time. Thank you so much.